Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to explain to you on the 8th chapter or the 8th module of your ENT 300. Like what I have mentioned in the previous video on chapter 7, which you are required to actually prepare a business plan for your assignment, right? For your group assignment. So, um, the first thing that you need to prepare is the marketing plan. So, let's look at what is the content of marketing plan. Okay, basically, when you outline your marketing plan, it must consist of these eight items, all right? Now, bear in mind that the marketing plan contents and also whatever that you discuss or you have in this particular marketing plan must be uh, decided together by the whole member. All right, I don't want this marketing plan will be only prepared by the marketing manager and also assistant marketing manager. All right, no, it has to be done together because this marketing plan is the heart of your business plan. Whatever decided in this marketing plan will be later on, um, what they call it, um, reflects or actually affects whatever that you will be doing in your operations as well as your uh, administrative plan. Okay, so uh, there are eight items. The first one is on product and also service description. Later on, each one of these I will explain further. All right, basically, um, I want to see these eight items, all right, in your marketing plan. Okay, the first one is product or service description. Um, this particular section will actually state clearly the value and also benefits of product or services to the customers that you are offering. All right, you should actually explain, all right, this should be in a paragraph, yeah, um, what are the uniqueness or the strength of the product or services that you are offering, okay, such as you can talk about the formulation of the product, ingredients that you use, okay, the safety of it, the ease of, ease of use, okay, how easy for you to actually manage or um, what they call it, uh, how easy you're going to use the product okay for the customer to actually open it okay or manage it or navigate it and etc okay you can also um talk about the lifespan of the product okay could it be like last for a lifetime okay or it will be for a three-year period so five-year period so it will be forever and so on okay well, nothing lasts forever anyway. Um, next, you can also talk about the flexibility of it, the assortment of the products that you sell, okay, location of your service, okay, it, or it could be a location of the um, product accessibility in a way that where can people buy your product? Can they get it everywhere? Okay, or is it online? So once it's online, then it can reach a very large market or large location. Okay, you can also talk about the operations hour. This is especially when you're talking about offering services, yeah. Mm, the operation hour is very important as uh, people would like to go to the shop or to, to get that service at certain hour where it is convenient for them. Okay, you can also talk about personalization in a way that your product is actually uh, made to order. Okay, remember when you talk about um, being uh, different or being unique in a way that you will actually produce a product that the customer want to have. Okay. And you can also have some extended warranty if it is related to the product or the service that you are selling. Secondly, the item that you must have in your marketing plan is the target market. Okay, this is where you are going to identify who are the people that most likely will buy the product that you are selling. Okay, now bear in mind that the target market not necessarily has to be your customer. This target market consists of everybody, okay, be it your customer or your competitor's customer, okay, or your, your potential customer that has the um, likelihood to actually purchase your product, okay. You can make use of demographic factors or behaviors, interests, and etc. Please read the full notes of this particular chapter when you do your target market, okay. I'm not going to explain to you in this particular video. Next, you also need to estimate how many of this target market, okay, from the total population of your business location or your nearby locations, right? Um, this is important, yeah, to know what is the population of your business location. That means you need to go to the, the statistic department website, okay? If you're talking about uh, market 
marketing your product or selling your product in the whole Malaysia. So get to know what is the population of Malaysia. Okay, if you say that, okay, you don't want to sell in the whole Malaysia, you would like to sell only in Sarawak. So get to know what is the total population of Sarawak. Okay, after that, you can also um, find out that not everybody is going to buy, like the whole population, they will not actually buy your product. There are certain percentage out of this total population will actually purchase your product. So the estimation of this um, percentage is when you look at the further uh, details of the statistics uh, of this population, yeah, example in terms of their age. So you're targeting like certain age. So like, therefore you can see that this particular age are this amount. Therefore you will be able to find how many percent of them are your target market. The third one is when you do the market estimation. In this particular video, or especially on this particular slide, yeah, um, I'm going to give you an example from a total population of, let's say, in that particular location that you chose, okay, you went to sell in that location A. So in that location A, you know that there are 100,000 people, okay? Now, and not everybody will buy your product. Okay, or not everybody going to have your service. What happened is that you will be estimating that the target market that you identified based on their, let's say, demographic and also behavioral factors, 40% of the population are going to be your target market. Therefore, 40% of the 10, uh, sorry, 40% of 100,000 people were equal to 40,000 uh, custom, potential customer. Okay, these are your potential customer. Yeah. Now, um, you need to also decide on what will be the selling price of one unit of your product. Okay, uh, this decision is not necessary by only the marketing manager or the assistant marketing manager. This is what I told you just now in the earlier of this video. You need to discuss together about preparing this particular marketing plan. You don't decide alone. Okay, so you need to know how much is the price that you're going to sell for one unit of the product, let's say it's 10 ringgit. Now, assuming that each of them, okay, each of these particular potential customer, which are your target market, will purchase the product twice in a month. So you can have 40,000 people times two times a month times 10 ringgit, okay, times with 12 months so that you'll be able to get amount of your uh, sales for one year estimated uh, target market size yeah which is 9.6 million so this is your target market in ringgit value which is 9.6 million now bear in mind this is not yours okay like i told you this whole population that you targeted right not necessarily going to buy from you Okay, they can also buy from your competitors. So this amount is just the target market value in Ringgit Malaysia. Next, okay, in order for you to find out what will be your sales or what will be the amount for yours, your shares, okay, you need to first identify who are your competitors, okay? That is when you need to list down your competitors, identify who are they. Evaluate their strength and also weakness. How are you going to evaluate the strength and weaknesses of your competitors? By looking into what do they have and what they do, don't have. Okay, and from there you will estimate in percentage how much is their market share based on the evaluation of their strength and also their weaknesses just now. Next. When you do a competitor estimation yeah, or competition estimation, let's say it's a cafe business. Okay, cafe business. So um, you also know that who are the main competitors, okay, main competitors that sells coffee. Of course, like cafe normally, you're talking about selling coffee and tea, okay. So talking about coffee, number one is Starbucks, you have also coffee bean and tea leaves, you have Bing, and also other coffee shops, okay. So when you estimate, uh, sorry, when you identify them, you should be able to know how strong are they, and at which point that they are not good at, all right? From here, okay, you'll be able to create a pie chart, yeah? You must show a pie chart on your report, okay? You can see that perhaps um, many people, okay, Starbucks has been uh, in Sarawak, in Kuching, let's say that there is the location that you chose. Uh, it has been 
in Malaysia for a very quite some time and there are what they call it uh, Sabak fans or Sabak lovers okay that are very loyal to Starbucks okay same goes to coffee bean and tea leaves okay and also bean so you can actually uh, put according to your analysis based on your um, what they call it strength and also weaknesses okay then you can estimate that Starbucks actually have 40% shares coffee beans and tea leaf has 30% shares um, the bean has 20% shares while the others has 10% shares these are the industry player what they call it okay the, or your competitors right basically competitors or the industry uh, the players in the industry okay which is the cafe industry just now lah. now before you enter the market remember the 9.6 million that you have counted earlier okay the 9.6 million so this is based on all the target markets all right that you have counted so as you have put that starbucks has 40 percent of shares that means 40 percent from 9.6 million that is 3.84 million okay same goes to coffee bean 30 percent shares from 9.6 million you get this bing and also others this is what happened before you enter the market now as you wanted to open your shop okay your cafe business just now now you your business here okay you can't say that oh when you started the business then you become 50 percent shares or you you got the um 40 percent shares better than the other competitors no you are very new people may not know about your coffee or your cafe okay so you can't be too ambitious but perhaps you know that okay by doing all the uh, marketing strategy later on that you're gonna explain okay you'll be able to get at least four percent of the shares okay of course when you enter the market okay you become one of the industry player you will actually eat some of the shares from the existing competitors that's why just now when you see starbucks is 40 percent you already took one percent from the customer of starbucks to come to your business 1% from coffee bean, 1% from bean, and 1% from others. That's when you can get 4%. This is just an example. yeah. If you can have five competitors, then you may want to think of whether can you get 1% of the customers from all other competitors to become your customer, then you put 5%. Okay. If you think that, okay, you are so good that you think you can get 10%, then you have to justify how can you be so good that the moment you enter the market, there will be 10% shares that you can earn okay so be logic in explaining that now in this example i put four percent that means now the calculation of the shares in ringgit value will actually change but what is remain the same is this 9.6 million okay for your shares okay this is when you talk market share your share is four percent out of 9.6 million which is 384,000 ringgit malaysia this is the amount that you are going to use as your first year sales forecast. Okay, so here is your sales forecast. That let's say you start your business in January 2022. Okay, so um, yeah, like because now it's already um, coming to June. Okay, uh, you will be cleaning, needing to prepare everything else okay to to do the business uh, preparation and set up the business and so on then you decided that okay we will start our business in january 2022 so um remember the sales uh, forecast is for the first year equivalent to the market share that you have counted based on your four percent out of 9.6 million which is this 384,000 okay um you need to for the first year you need to show the monthly sales forecast okay uh why i put here 10 this is 3 this is 15 we were talking about some justification in this particular month yeah let's say uh because of january you just started you do a lot of promotion you do grand opening many free samples people get to know you you become viral okay for the first month so you estimated that you will be getting 10 percent out of this sales forecast for the first month then you estimate lah in your february how much okay you will be earning march uh, april let's say because it's a fasting month therefore the perhaps you know, people don't really drink coffee during uh, fasting month okay so it changed to it drops to three percent 
okay perhaps in june there will be school holidays right so many people stay at home or people uh would like to go out and have uh coffee not only just in the morning but also later in the afternoon or also evening then you might think that okay we will get 15 percent of the yearly sales forecast in june okay so you put every month how much is the percentage out of this amount then you put what is the ringgit value then you justify here what will happen why you say it is higher why you say it is lower okay some festive season and whatsoever you can just put into this justification okay now um the or oh, before that um the sale forecast that you do here uh is for one year every month okay for the first year it has to be every month now for the second year you might estimate that because you already established for one year okay the second year perhaps you would like to think that you may be able to increase your whole uh sales per year by let's say five percent so you don't have to show monthly um forecast anymore you just show that by the second year you estimate that you'll be earning five percent more than last year that means second year increased by five percent okay and for the third year right you might think that okay from the um estimation that you have done for the second year okay you might think that there will be an increment of your sales by 10 percent from the second year okay so that will be your sale forecast in the third year right if you don't understand that part please ask me during our uh, lecture time yeah or while you are doing your um discussion right next uh, marketing strategy a marketing strategy involves four p's okay why i call it four p's because they are product pricing place and also promotion strategy okay in this particular marketing strategy what happens is that you will actually um talk about what are the specialty of your product okay you emphasize more on let's say uh the product packaging okay the ingredient the formulation of the product for example yakut right you know yakut right that is the um what they call it yakut lah yang vitagen tu right uh yakut is so special because uh it has that micro bacteria yang baik for your usus right okay uh that is patented by the uh those japanese lah yang created the scientists okay japanese scientists who created that particular um microbacteria that is good for your um digestion okay so uh, you can actually emphasize more on such formulation in this particular product strategy in the beginning i already told you about your product right that one is just an overview of it okay but in this marketing strategy you will actually um further explain on the specialty the uniqueness of your product second is the pricing strategy please refer again like i told you to the full notes of your chapter uh, eight yeah uh, looking at the pricing strategy you can actually choose which pricing strategy you wanted to put for your product okay remember you have set the mark uh, the, the price when you wanted to calculate your market size yeah uh be consistent okay don't say that okay in your estimation or market size is 10 ringgit per unit but then suddenly in your pricing strategy you are saying that you are selling at 20 ringgit per unit okay so that is wrong so please be consistent and look into what type of pricing strategy that you wanted to use now uh it can be based on profit or be based on markup based on cost okay or based on the uh, perceived value okay and there are many uh what they call it tactics yeah when you talk about pricing tactics you can use um membership price if you have some member that you want uh, a membership that you want to offer for your uh, customers okay or it can be a uh, discounted price okay um there are many pricing tactics that you can actually google lah, right next one is the place or distribution strategy you're talking about how you wanted to maximize the place or the distribution of your product okay how can actually people buy your product let's say you don't want to just sell on facebook you also want to sell on instagram you also want to sell on shopee as well as on lazada on ebay on amazon okay so you talk about why you choose those uh, places that you wanted to sell the product or if let's say you're talking about you just have one coffee shop at that particular location you tell why you choose that location 
where the order location is very strategic. Now, define me strategic. What do you mean by strategic? How strategic is strategic? Okay, so you uh, you show the map, location map, yeah? If you're talking about a physical location of the product, you show why is that particular location is so special? Why is that location is so strategic? Okay, and lastly, on the promotion strategy, you talk about how you're going to promote your product. How will people get to know your product? Are you going to engage some influencers to promote your product? Who are the influencers? How much are you going to pay him or her? Okay, if you say, okay, we're going to advertise on a uh, radio, which radio station? Why you choose that radio station? If you say, oh, we will advertise on a uh, newspaper. Who reads newspapers nowadays? Unless your product is actually for elderly people. Elderly people, yes, they do read newspaper. Okay, so uh, be uh, logistic, sorry, be what they call it, uh, be logical, lah. Logistic, lah. be logical when you actually think of where you want to promote your product if the product are for the youngsters okay so of course you know youngsters are very much engaged or very much dependent on the social networks and social media okay so make use of that uh, platforms to promote your product now in this particular promotion strategy you are also required to create or to design a poster okay for the advertisement of your product Okay, create one poster for the advertisement of the product that you think that you're going to actually um, advertise that particular poster on a social network. Okay, um, if you are very creative and you are really um, having a lot of time to do this, then you can also create a video, right, to show that how, what will be the video that you will use to actually promote the product that you are selling. Lastly, is the marketing budget. This section, okay, includes, oh, this uh, particular item, okay, includes three uh, section, sections of your budget. There are investment on fixed assets, working capital. So, working capital is actually your monthly expenditure, okay, and other marketing expenses. Now, in this section, okay, what happens is that you will actually list down what are the fixed assets that you're going to buy, okay? Fixed assets that are used only for marketing purposes yeah marketing purposes okay don't talk about being uh, buying a fixed asset let's say you buy a shop lot for you to do the business no that one that shop lot is not under marketing budget the shop lot will be under the administrative budget okay for your budget of a fixed asset could include sign bots all right some furniture that you will use to display your products okay Marketing line, when you talk about buying a very nice furniture, okay, very nice uh, glass uh, cupboard, okay, a nice um, metal or gold uh, rack, okay, and so on. So, you use that to do the marketing of your product. So, that is included as your fixed assets, okay. Some machines like you're going to use in your uh, marketing, like for example, the, um, the, the scanning machine for customer to purchase the product, okay. That one will be under your fixed asset. Next is the working capital. This will be the monthly expenditure of the marketing uh, department. Yeah? So it includes the salary of marketing personnel. Okay, Your promotion, periodic the promotion. When you do promotion, of course, you need to pay. You do advertisement, you need to pay. Okay, You want to send out flyers. I do not know whether people actually read flyers nowadays or not. Or you want to um, prepare your business card. Okay, So those are actually for marketing. Remember... Whatever that you pay monthly for marketing purposes, that will be inside this working capital for marketing budget. Because later on, for operation budget, they will also have the same thing here. Fixed asset for operation budget, working capital for operation budget, as well as other operation expenses Okay, in the operation budget. Same goes to the administrative. They do have their fixed asset, working capital, and also other administrative expenses. Okay? So make sure that when you list down here, other marketing expenses, this, uh, this is considered as one-time expenses for one year. Okay? That will not incur every month. Anything that incur every month will be in the working capital. While anything that incur 
a year yearly okay you can say that um not opening ceremony lah you don't do opening ceremony every day every year sorry perhaps you want to do uh, anniversary uh, promotion for example that will be yearly right so you can actually put that in the second year lah but in this case you don't have to show for the second year budget okay for the purpose of your ENT 300 you only just show for one year budget which is the first year budget of your marketing expenses okay so that's all for this particular chapter i hope you are able to understand and by now you should be able to actually draft out what are the eight items okay of your marketing plan that you're going to do for your business plan if you have any questions please ask me in our telegram chat all right thank you guys bye